Hello, I'm Justin Rezus, and today I'll be talking to you about our work Asynchronous Multiparty Quantum Computation. This is a joint work with Fipple Guile, Chenda Lu Zheng, and Joao Ribeiro. In multiparty quantum computation, a number of parties want to perform a quantum computation on their quantum inputs. At the end of the protocol, each party gets its own output. For security, no party should learn anything about any other party's input even if they arbitrarily deviate from the protocol. For example, they might decide not to send certain messages. There's been quite a bit of work on designing secure multi-party quantum computation. The first work on this area achieves statistical security and guaranteed output delivery, as long as less than one-sixth of the parties are corrupted. Follow-up work improved the th this threshold to the optimal one-half threshold for statistical security. Later work considered the dishonest majority case, starting with the special case of two-party quantum computation. This work achieves computational security with a board. It was later generalized to multi-party quantum computation, where all but one party might be corrupted. Further work improved the security guarantee to identifiable abort. Another work achieved a constant round protocol, although they only achieve security with abort. However, all of these protocols have been in the synchronous network model. Even in the classical setting, real-world networks cannot guarantee synchrony. Since quantum networks are more general than classical ones, we can't expect to solve this problem when we eventually construct real-world quantum networks. This leaves open the problem of constructing secure multi-party quantum computation in asynchronous networks. In the synchronous model, all messages are guaranteed to arrive within a fixed amount of time. If party D does not receive party C's message on time, then it knows that party C never sent the message in the first place. However, even in the classical setting, real world networks do not provide this guarantee. Even worse, synchronous protocols often fail catastrophically as soon as even one message is delayed. A more realistic model is the asynchronous network model. In this model, there's no guarantee when a message will arrive, only that they will eventually arrive. As a consequence, it is impossible to, to distinguish between an adversarial party which never sent a message and an honest party whose messages just haven't arrived yet. Let's say that there was one corrupted party, but no one knows who. After receiving messages from four parties, you can't tell whether the last party will ever send you a message, so the protocol has to progress. This means that in the asynchronous setting, the inputs of some parties have to be ignored. Asynchronous protocols are even more difficult in the quantum setting. In particular, since states cannot be duplicated, the no cloning theorem rules out quantum broadcast which is a crucial tool for enabling classical asynchronous protocols. In this work, we study the feasibility of quantum secure computation in the asynchronous network model. On the positive side, we show that asynchronous multi-party quantum computation is possible as long as less than one fourth of the parties are corrupted. Furthermore, we show that this result is tight. Asynchronous multi-party quantum computation is completely impossible if any more parties are corrupted. Interestingly, in the classical setting, the optimal threshold is one third. As we can see here, our protocol has statistical security and guaranteed output delivery. I'll start by discussing the feasibility result. Our protocol follows the traditional secret sharing based outline. First, each party shares their input using a protocol called verifiable quantum secret sharing. Intuitively, verifiable quantum secret sharing ensures that the parties hold a well-formed secret sharing at the end of the protocol, or else they all know that the dealer tried to cheat. Once valid shares are distributed, the parties can evaluate the circuit gate by gate using standard techniques. Finally, the parties send the output shares to the appropriate party. Similarly to prior work, the primary technical difficulty is in constructing verifiable quantum secret sharing. A verifiable quantum secret sharing scheme has two phases, sharing and reconstruction. 
At a high level, if the sharing phase is successful, then all parties have a valid share. Otherwise, all parties know that it failed. Additionally, if the sharing phase is successful, then the reconstructor should always output the same secret. Note that it's not allowed to fail in this reconstruction. Similarly to prior work, we'll start by building a weaker primitive called weak quantum secret sharing. Then we'll use this to later build verifiable quantum secret sharing. In weak quantum secret sharing, the reconstructor is also allowed to output a special failure state. As a starting point, let's consider weak quantum secret sharing in the synchronous setting. It turns out that it is enough to construct it just for zero states. Using this, the parties can construct an EPR pair and send one half to the dealer. Then, the dealer can teleport their, share, their secret into the other half of the EPR pair, which is still shared amongst the parties. We will be able to use a similar trick in the asynchronous setting as well. In prior work, weak quantum secret sharing for zero states uses three steps. First, the dealer splits a, a zero state into several shares and authenticates them. Then, they send the authenticated shares to each party and send the authentication key to a classical trusted third party. This trusted third party can be implemented using any secure computation protocol for classical functionalities. This is done uh, a total of two lambda plus one times, where lambda is the security parameter. Finally, the parties perform some local computations and measure all but one of their shares. They send the results to the trusted third party, who runs a test which checks that all of the shares that uh, each party held are for a zero state. To reconstruct, the parties send their authenticated shares to the reconstructor, and the trusted third party sends the authentication key to the reconstructor. If the dealer was honest, then this means that the corrupted parties cannot tamper with their shares, and the reconstructor can safely reconstruct. On the other hand, if the dealer was dishonest, then the corrupted parties can change their shares during the reconstruction phase. However, the honest parties still hold valid shares, and in this scenario, they hold, have enough shares to uniquely determine the reconstructed value. Now let's move to the asynchronous case. Recall that in this setting, the protocol must progress with only n minus t participants, since if the t corrupted parties never sent a message, they can't be distinguished from an honest but delayed party. In the picture, party one share is delayed by the network. The classical approach to solving this problem is to agree on a core set of parties who received correct shares. These parties can be expected to contribute during the reconstruction phase. Since this is an agreement on a classical value, we can use the classical trusted third party for this. Unfortunately, there are some issues with this approach. After we remove the one party who didn't get a share, there are only four parties left to participate in the reconstruction. However, one of these parties might be adversarial and they could withhold their uh, share from the reconstructor. So this means that the reconstructor might only receive three shares. Of course, we can't distinguish this case from an honest party which is just delayed when they send their shares. So this means that of the three shares that the reconstructor receives, one could still be adversarial. If the dealer is dishonest, then the corrupted party knows the authentication key and can change their share without being detected. This means that the reconstructor would receive two correct shares and one incorrect share. The threshold for a quantum secret sharing scheme must be over one half, so this incorrect share might change the secret. This means that for safety, the reconstructor must always output failure. In the classical setting, this issue is addressed by having every party sign the tested shares during the sharing phase. This would prevent the adversary from changing shares later, even if the dealer is dishonest. Unfortunately, quantum signatures are impossible. To make matters worse, when the dealer is honest and the same situation occurs, reconstruction must always succeed for correctness. To deal with this, 
we introduce a new primitive called weak quantum secret sharing with weak termination. Weak termination allows the reconstructor to hang forever if the dealer is dishonest. It is worth noting that although we build verifiable quantum secret sharing from this primitive, uh, our verifiable quantum secret sharing protocol will still have the normal termination property. Our insight is to build a late checking mechanism into the protocol which allows parties outside of the core set to contribute. This is in contrast to current classical asynchronous protocol techniques where only the parties in the core set contribute. In the picture, the dotted lines denote old messages. Everyone except party one has moved on, but party one still gets to check their share. To allow this, we show how to implement an expanded trusted third party functionality, which allows it to interact with just a single party. If the dealer is honest, then eventually party one will get a correct share. After it checks the share with the trusted third party, it can send it to the reconstructor. In particular, this means that every honest party will eventually sh send a share to the reconstructor. Because there are n minus t honest parties, the reconstructor can just wait until it receives n minus t shares, which in this example is four. Recall that previously, it had to proceed after receiving only n minus two t shares, which is three in this example. It is important to note that late checking does not change the case for a corrupted dealer, since the delayed honest parties might never receive the shares in the first place. Using weak quantum secret sharing protocol we just constructed, we can now build asynchronous verifiable quantum secret sharing. As before, it is enough to just verifiably share zero states. We'll use the two layer approach from prior work. First, the dealer splits a zero state using a standard quantum polynomial secret sharing and they send the shares to each party. Then each party shares their level one shares again using weak quantum secret sharing with weak termination. When we later try to reconstruct the level one shares, any level one shares belonging to corrupted parties might have their reconstruction hang forever. Third, the parties test their shares by performing some measurements and sending the results to a classical trusted third party. If the shares all pass the test, then there are all valid shares of a zero state. The sharing terminates as soon as n minus t parties have valid shares. To reconstruct, the parties do the reconstruction phase for the weak quantum secret sharing scheme in order to help the reconstructor can reconstruct the level one shares. As soon as the reconstructor has at least n minus two t level one shares, it can recombine them to get the secret. Note that because of weak termination, the reconstructor might never manage to reconstruct the level one shares belonging to the T corrupted parties which received shares. In fact, it doesn't even have to fail. It could just hang forever when reconstructing those shares. This is why the threshold for reconstruction is n minus two T instead of n minus T. However, weak quantum secret sharing still prevents the corrupted parties from changing their level one shares. Their only option is to withhold them. This means that it is always safe to reconstruct with the minimum number of shares, which is just over one half. For more details about the construction, please see the full paper. I'll now discuss the impossibility result. We will just focus on the verifiable secret sharing functionality. We want to show that it is impossible to achieve verifiable secret sharing for even one fourth corruptions. By standard arguments, it is enough to argue impossibility for four parties and one corruption. Intuitively, we can show that a verifiable quantum secret sharing scheme for this scenario implies a quantum erasure code which can correct two erasures in four shares. Uh, if they did, then we could clone quantum states by encoding them into four shares and then reconstructing the state using two sets of two shares each. This would give us two different copies. Let's imagine a scenario where the dealer is corrupted and does not send any share to party three. During this, party two uh, will also behave honestly. Note that party two here is corrupted. If party three is sufficiently delayed, then party one and party four will assume that party three is not sending messages and they won't detect that party three never received a share in the first place. 
Then, during reconstruction, the corrupt party too can just withhold their share and stay silent. At this point, party three doesn't have a share to contribute, so parties one and four uh, must be able to reconstruct the secret. However, this would correct exactly two out of four shares, uh, which would violate the impossibility for quantum erasure correcting codes. Thanks for listening. You can find the full version of our paper on the IACR ePrint server.